Views are one of ClickUp's most powerful features, but they can also be the most daunting. There are thousands of different views you can create inside of ClickUp, but the more that you do create, the more confusing it can be for your team. And this is a massive reason that we see thousands of agencies fail to implement the tool. So as an agency, what views are non-negotiable? And what views are gonna offer you the clarity and ease of use that'll help you build a simple but powerful system inside of ClickUp? Hi, I'm Jeff Seifer, your productivity professor, and I'm here to discuss the eight different views that every agency needs to build out inside of ClickUp. So let's get started. So as an agency, you need to think about the five different users that are gonna be in your system when you start creating out these views. Number one, that's gonna be your individual contributors. These are gonna be the people that just need to see the work that's on their plate. Number two, that's gonna be your account management team. So these people need to see work across multiple clients. They need to see sort of the higher level how projects are going so they can take that to their meetings. Number three, this is gonna be your project management or team leads. They need to have views for assigning work, um, making sure people have capacity so they need to see that workload. And they also need to be able to remap due dates um, when necessary. Number four, that's gonna be your leadership team. They need to see overall project health. They need to see how everything's going just to make sure if they need to jump into a meeting or bring in additional resources, they are able to see all of that. And they need to see all of that in one place across all of the different clients. And lastly, you also need to think about your clients. Your clients need to have a view of all the work that you're doing so that you don't have to send them status update after status update. So you can also create views for your clients inside of ClickUp. So to start, let's talk about your individual contributors and jump into the first view, which is the My Task view. So here in ClickUp, you'll see I have what is called the My Tasks view, and this is built at the everything level. This My Task view is going to be very similar to what you see in the Home view. So ClickUp has this home feature, which I can use. However, the My Task view gives me a little bit more flexibility and uh, ways to customize it than the home view does. So I use this because then I can filter out if I have some spaces like a process library where maybe I have work assigned to me, but those aren't actually actionable tasks I need to do. This My Task view allows me to filter things like that out. In addition, I also have more ways that I can add in columns if I want to adjust those. I can add in breadcrumbs, things like that. So you just have more ability to customize this. So it's very good to have a view like this for everyone at your agency, especially those individual contributors who are coming into work every single day and they need to see what's on their plate. Obviously this view needs to be populated by tasks. So you need to have the tasks in the system, but the my task view is gonna be the first view that you want to create inside of ClickUp. And the way that you'll do that is again, at the everything level, this can be created just like this. You'll wanna build one of these out for everyone on your team. It can be customized for each person. They want to have all of the, the signee set up so that it's me or you can use me mode. We need to make sure that all the work is just assigned to them. That's all they need to see. Keep it very specific for them. In addition here, you'll also be able to group it by due date and show subtasks as separate tasks. That's super important because if you're working on a subtasks, you need to make sure that these actually show up. On this view, you also have the ability to adjust any of these breadcrumbs. As you see here, if I want to go into show, um, I can customize all of that in here as well. So if I want to show the task locations or subtask parent names, that just gives me a good view of where this task is coming from. If you have all those tasks split out in the hierarchy, like growth, delivery, and operations, what I have here. In addition to this view, you're also going to be able to see a signee. Obviously, that's going to be to me. You'll have your due dates, priorities, time estimates. I can track time directly here. I can also leave com comments, and I'll also be able to see the total time and status. You can hide or adjust this any way that you want, but this view is a great way to show all of your individual contributors the tasks they have that are overdue, that are due today, tomorrow, and in the future. So they're gonna have a dedicated task list that they can show all of their tasks. So after you create your My Task view, the next view you're gonna to wanna to create is a view for your account management team. So your account managers essentially need to see work across just their clients. They don't want to see other clients. They don't want to have to go into each individual client, see all the work there. They want to have one view where all of that is happening so they can see it across, again, all of their clients. So there's going to be a little bit more setup into this than the mind task view, but essentially what you need to do is you need to have the correct hierarchy. Within the hierarchies, you'll see I have the delivery space. So this is where all my client facing work is going to live. I'm going to have all of my folders. These folders are all going to be clients and each client with their folder, all their work is gonna live in that folder. So that's gonna make it super easy for me to get all that one spot and create a view where I can see just work across those clients. So as you'll see here, I have some color coordination on these folders right here. The first three clients that I have are assigned to Gray. He is the account manager for this. 
So what I need to do is I need to create a view for him to see work across Foodline, Jenny Eagle, and Hannaford. So as you'll see here, I come to my delivery space and I have this account manager view. What this view is doing is it's filtering just the tasks from these folders and not these folders. So how I'm building that is I'm using a custom field. The account manager is gray. That means every single task in all these folders needs to have that custom field applied to it. It doesn't mean I'm assigning this work to gray. It doesn't mean that. It just means that I'm using that custom field to create a view. You can also use this custom field for dashboards and things like that. But with this, we're going to take that and we're going to create a view from it. So that can be done via automation. You can set up that automation at the folder level. Essentially, anytime a task is created, I'm going to apply that custom field to that task. And what this does is now I can come here. I can see work for Food Lion, Giant Eagle, and Hannaford as well. All that is in one place. I can also adjust these columns however I need to. I'm grouping by client here as well, as you can see. And I'm just showing the parent task in this. I'm not doing subtasks as separate tasks. You can, but that might be a little bit too much information in one place. This allows me to see just the high-end deliverables because for us, we have parent tasks being the deliverable names and all the subtasks are the steps, the action steps necessary to complete um, this deliverable. And I can come here, I can see the status of all these. So if I want to go here and see maybe this Pinterest post is in client review and I need to bring that up in my meeting, I can easily see that. If something's blocked, maybe there's an issue. Um, I can also look at, at the latest comments or, or view all the comments that are happening in this Google search campaign. I have one view for all this information. In addition, we'll be able to see the time that's actually tracked for all these versus the time estimates. So we can see if there's any issues there, latest comments, the total time in status, my work categories, budget months, as well as a progress bar that'll automatically update as the subtasks are complete. So this way, again, Gray has one view where he can come and see all this work. It's not all work assigned to him, but he's just the account manager for those different accounts. So he can see and get a good view of everything that's happening. And after our account management views, we need to start thinking about our project managers. So our project managers really need to be able to see capacity as well as be able to assign work and remap work if they need to. So the big part is going to be this workload view. This workload view can be created at the everything space. It can also be created at delivery, growth operations, or wherever you want to build it. However, if I build at the everything level, this allows me to see work across my whole workspace. So a few things to note on this is first, whenever you create this view, you need to make sure you come into show and you put subtasks and turn those on. A lot of times when you create this workload view, it's not going to show subtasks right off the bat. So you need to adjust that setting. That's why a lot of times people build this and they're like, workload is not real at all. There's nothing showing up here. What the heck's going on? You need to show those subtasks. That's going to be very helpful. And make sure that if you do have work in the subtasks, that's all going to show up here in this workload view. In addition, you're also able to uh, set this up. You can set custom capacities for for your users. So if they're 40 hours or say they're only 20 hours for the week, if they're part-time, you can do that here as well. As you can see here, we have a two hour capacity per day. Um, I'm adjusting that just like this. It's a 10 hour weekly capacity. And that'll just shorten that up to make sure we're not overbooking them. In addition with this, uh, you need to note that workload is a great view inside of any project management tool, but the only way to really make it work is if you have time estimates on every task, due dates on every task, as well as assignees on every task. All of these uh, workloads here are being pulled from those time estimates, being pulled from those due dates and those assignees. That's essentially how it shows up on Gray's workload view on August 2nd. So we need to make sure that data is in the system. And for that to actually work, we also create what is called a QA view. So QA view is for your project managers. Oftentimes we also have a ClickUp champion that'll help with this work. And this is a view for them to come in, as you'll see here, I'm utilizing conditional logic in ClickUp that allows me to see time estimates, due dates, and assignees where, where those are not set. So if it's a time estimate or a due date or assignee, they're not set, I want those tasks to show up in this view. I can also do a little bit more additional filtering if I want to, to pare this down a little bit. But this allows me as a product manager, or again, as a ClickUp champion, to come in and see all the tasks that they don't have assignee, again, there's no assignee. How's it going to show up on that workload view for a specific person? I can look at the due dates. Again, if there's no due dates on any of these tasks, it's not going to show up on that workload as well as time estimates. Those are the three ingredients that you need on every single task. So this view allows my project manager to come in and see, okay, where do we not have assignees? Where we don't have due dates? Where do we not have time estimates? And I can look at who it was created by. So I can leave them a comment on this task to say, hey, 
We need to make sure this has something. Can I help you with this time estimate? Can I help with the assignee? Can I help with the due date as well? This will give us them one view to come to, to see all that information to, again, make sure we get that workload um, actually realistic. There's obviously a lot more with planning and forecasting and things like that that we need to work on, but that is something to start out with for your workload view. Additionally, for product managers, they're also going to need a way to easily assign work to the team. So oftentimes, if you're in a project management tool, it might take a while to assign all of your tasks out to people. So what we do is we create what is called an assignee view, and we utilize a drop down custom field called deliver role. So this deliver role custom field is built into all of my processes. So every single task in my system is going to have a deliver role custom field applied to it. So if I go to this task, you'll be able to see that custom field. As we can see right here, deliver role is senior strategist. I have all of my options here. And these are essentially all the roles that I have at my agency. And every single task is gonna have that deliver role applied to it. That way it's gonna filter into this assignee view. This assignee view is gonna be created at every folder. Um, if that's the easiest, this can also be created at the space level, but that might be a little bit too much. It can be created at the list level. So there's a bunch of different levels. I would recommend that you build it at the folder level for each of your clients. Um, that way it's pretty easy to assign per client. Again, if you build out the space level, it's gonna be way too many tasks. It'd be a little bit more difficult. This way, if you have one senior strategist or strategist per client, you build it at the folder level, it's gonna be very easy to assign this workout, especially if you have tasks going into multiple lists here. So as you can see here, the way that this works is I'm grouping by deliver role. I have my subtasks shown as separate tasks. That's very important, especially if you have subtasks being the action steps that are taken to complete a deliverable. And within this, what I'm gonna do is you'll see, I have my senior strategies here. If this was not assigned, I can easily come here, select all, and I can come up here, assign that to Andrew if he's the senior strategist. Then I can come down to strategist and I can assign this out. If I come here, use my multitask toolbar, which is a super handy tool inside of ClickUp. And I can assign that to Gray if he's the strategist as well. And I can also take that and say we need to reassign all this work too. So if I wanted to, I can easily come and I can unassign this work um, just like that. And then I can reassign it after as well. So I unassign all of that, remove the assignees, and I can come here again, select all. And let's say I need to reassign this to Kevin here. Um, that'll allow me to do that. So this view allows me to assign work at the beginning unassign it, say if someone leaves or something happens, and then I can reassign it to, to someone else. So this assignee view is very helpful. Again, I'd build at the folder level, utilize a deliver role custom field in all of your tasks. That way you can build the view at the folder level, route it all up and assign all of your work in bulk using the ClickUp multitask toolbar. And after the assignee view is gonna be a date remapping view. So the date remapping view is a Gantt view inside of ClickUp that allows you to remap due dates. So whether it's at the beginning of a project and something gets pushed out or it's in the middle of a project, say your client doesn't get feedback in time and we need to push out some due dates and to have that reflected in our project management tool, this Gantt view is a great way for you to push out those due dates as a project manager. So as I can come here uh, into this Gantt view, as you'll see, I have my whole process built out with dependencies. You need to have dependencies in order for this to work. Um, as you see, as I can come here and all of my tasks have those dependencies built into it, the main thing that I need to do is I can go into show. I need to turn on reschedule dependencies as well as hide and skip weekends. Hide and skip weekends are going to allow me to skip the weekends. So when I reschedule these tasks, I don't want something to fall on a Saturday or Sunday. I can utilize those reschedule dependencies and hide and skip weekends to, again, reschedule all my tasks and skip those weekends so that a, a Sunday task falls on a Monday. Saturday falls on a Friday, so on and so forth. So if I take this, as you can see, I can come here as a project manager, let's say that this task gets pushed out, I can take that and the whole process is gonna move together. So it makes it super easy for people to, again, push out due dates, whether it's at the beginning of a workflow or middle or at the end. And moving on from our project managers, we also need to think about the leadership team. So the leadership team is really trying to understand how all of our clients are, are doing, how they're progressing, how everything's going overall, the health, NPS, um, things like that to make sure that everything is going, going according to plan. They need to know if maybe we should try to get a case study built out or maybe they need to bring in additional resources to a client. So you're gonna wanna have an account dashboard, a client health tracker, or a more robust CRM inside of ClickUp. And this is a bit of a different view. This is more of a, a whole separate um, space inside of ClickUp where all this is going to live. It's not necessarily tied to 
all of your actionable tasks that are happening in your delivery space over here. Um, this is going to be a separate, separate space. So we do have a template for this that you can download below in the description of this video. Um, I'm going to quickly walk through all that's included. So within this agency client health tracker, we're going to have all of our clients. They are all going to be um, kind of record tasks here, not necessarily the actual tasks, but it's a way for me to keep track of all this information. So your leadership team can come here. They can see all of the good accounts right now, sort of not so good and red flag. So Shrew Farms not going so well. This is a great way for them to see that. And um, they can come here into the comments. And so your account managers are going to be tasks with filling all this information out. So they're going to have a weekly update on why would the customer be unhappy? Are you happy with this account? Have there been any changes in strategy or timeline? And what do you need help with on this account? That way, again, all this is going to be filtered to one place for your leadership team to see. In addition to that, they're going to have the status of, of active onboarding, if it's offboarding as well, your health scores, as you can see here, MPS scores, services, objectives, billing, so on and so forth. Just a great way for your leadership team to see all that information in one place. So if there's any uh, red flags happening, they can bring in additional resources or attend um, the next client review meeting. In addition, if things are going well, maybe it's time to um, reach out for a case study. So this is a great place for your leadership team to have a view for all of that information. The last view that you need to think about is a client view for your clients. So within ClickUp, you can build nice views for your clients that allow them to see all of the work that you're doing for them, the work that you've done for them, the work that's in progress, as well as work that's coming up in the future. So if you build out all of your processes correct with the deliverables being those parent tasks, as well as the subtasks being the action steps that are necessary to complete those deliverables, this is going to allow you to create a nice view for your clients so that you don't have to go setting up a bunch of status updates. It's already built out and automated for you. So what you can do, this is going to be built out the folder level for each of your clients. So you can see here, I have my Dunner Mifflin folder and I come here to this client view. I'll be able to see all the tasks that we've closed for them. So we have a social media campaign that was closed for them, all the tasks that are in client review. So there's a Facebook campaign that's in review, um, tasks that are blocked in progress or still to do. They'll be able to see the due dates, the statuses, and the progress. And this is, again, going to be automatically updated um, based off of those subtasks. So as you come here, you can also add additional columns if you want. But the big part of this is going to be grouping by status, as well as just making sure the status is all of them. Or you can make sure it's not closed. If you want to create separate views for, for closed versus open tasks, um, you can do that as well. Um, but the big thing here is you're going to want to come. To this view here, I can take this, go into sharing and permissions, and I can copy this as a public link that allows me to either share it directly with a client, or what I can do is I can take that and embed it into a ClickUp document that can become a client portal, or I can embed it into a dashboard as well for that client to see um, that way. Because that way you could tie in results and other analytics with this view so they can see what you're doing um, and what the result of, of what you've done uh, has done as well. So. That's a great way for you to create a client view. Again, it's going to be completely automated just based off of your tasks. They'll be able to see here just sort of the parent tasks, the deliverables, instead of all the nitty gritty details. That way you can create a nice client view for them to see and have um, as a link instead of having to email you all the time uh, about progress. And there you have it. There's the eight views that you need to build as an agency. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. We're going to continue to deliver content specifically for agencies inside of ClickUp. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, if you'd like ClickUp's highest rated solutions partner to help you implement the tool and make this your last project management implementation you'll ever need, go to zenpilot.com call and book a call with us. We've helped thousands of different agencies, double productivity, increase utilization, and significantly improve client health by streamlining their operations in ClickUp. And we'd love to do the same for you. And again, my name is Jeff Seifer, productivity professor here at Zempilot. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you again next time.